Welcome back, Cannonites. Last week's cannon fodder was a lot to digest, and as can be expected after such a huge info drop, this week is a bit on the lighter side. Before diving in, I need to issue an important correction to a recent statement. In my video on the print edition of Halo New Blood, I reported that at the time it was made, the coda was only available in the print edition. As it turns out, since then, the bonus pages have appeared in digital copies of the book in both Apple's iBooks app and in versions purchased via Google Play. While it has yet to appear in the Kindle purchased editions, at least to my knowledge, author Matt Forbeck assured me, both over Twitter and on the Halo Cannon Facebook page, if you can believe it, that it would be added in time. Thank you 343 for making this available to everyone, and thank you especially to Mr. Forbeck for taking the time to let us know. Well, with that out of the way, let's dive into the article. We open this week with a sneak peek of sorts at the Warzone map coming in the next monthly update, Skirmish at Darkstar. While the loss of Pinnacle Station dealt a massive blow to Liang Dortmund's operations on Meridian, demand for the planet's vitrified resources was neither slaked nor slowed. Working quickly and quietly to avoid the notice of the created, regional directors at Liang Dortmund quickly implemented contingency plans to mitigate the economic impact and reconstitute operations on the frontier planet Moon. Though the company's local headquarters at Meridian Station were devastated, the remote polar outpost of Dark Star Station survived, its workers and engineers largely unaware of the disaster that unfolded on the other side of the planet and the uncertain future that awaits them under Cortana's rule. Despite the uncertain astro-political climate, Liang Dortmund continues to accelerate resource-gathering operations while tacit permissions exist, transferring one of its largest resource processor ships, additional workers, and human resource specialists to Meridian's orbit in order to continue work and assess the company's remaining investments. But anomalies abound beneath the planet's surface as ancient machinery buried deep in the planet's mantle stirred to life, and the UNSC plans to once again revisit the surface in search of answers, regardless of what forces that intervention may unleash. Though the end of Halo 5 may seem to imply Cortana taking total control of the galaxy, there are important factors to consider. The Forerunners, while the most advanced race in the galaxy during their peak, were never masters of all space, this being why humanity could even establish their own empire. Guardians were used to police more volatile and less advanced races, so even if Cortana summoned them all, taking over the galaxy is no small order. Core Worlds would be her first targets, which is why private companies can continue to operate, seemingly under the created's noses. It might also explain the lack of a Guardian at St. Helios at the end of Halo 5, as perhaps, for reasons yet unknown, the world just wasn't a priority for the created at that time. The next section deals with the Halo World Championship, going on this weekend. To tie things in, Groim addresses whether or not the HWC or HCS, Halo Championship Series, are canon occurrences since Halo multiplayer in general is considered canon. In short, the answer is no. Speaking of the championship though, we're informed that by viewing the finals on Sunday through the Xbox One, starting at 4pm Pacific Time, you can get the HWC Rec Pack for free which includes a set of armor known as Challenger. The Challenger's high performance thrusters and shield emitter array require constant stress monitoring and adjustment to avoid critical failures during a match, much to the dismay of Infinity's support teams. The Challenger is built on a protector frame subjected to hundreds of additional tests and quality assurance checks, minimizing performance quirks that negatively impact competitive performance. The final section today talks about a recent behind-the-scenes video looking at the creation of the Arbiter's theme for Killer Instinct. If you love behind-the-scenes stuff, be sure to check it out. And with that, the article comes to a close, and we arrive at an update for the High Charity Universe entry. The update is all about Gemini, Wargames map set 840-5. Despite being taken over by the Flood, the UNSC in Ember clad attempted to gather as much intel on High Charity and Delta Halo as it could before termination. The data gathered for Gemini, along with other information, was thankfully captured by remote relays. Gemini itself is based on the Garden of Reverend Contemplation, assumed to be a place of thought and worship and dedicated to the High Prophet of Truth, as if his ego wasn't big enough already. Interestingly though, fan of the channel CIA90 shared with me a very interesting quote from the Halo 2 multiplayer map pack manual. The restful contemplative space towering above the lights of high charity is meant as a refuge for thought and meditation by senior prelates in the prophet hierarchy. In its silent halls, they can seek the solace of spirituality while contemplating the mysteries of the forerunners. Well, it seems the prelates had a minor mention in the lore long before Shadow of Intent. Thanks again for informing me, dude. Seriously. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching as always, and keep an eye open for the next video in my Halo 5 Breakdown series coming this week. Until then, this has been Halo Cannon.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.